Show of hands, did anybody actually watch this movie? Does anybody actually care to watch this movie? There you go. So, uh, wish. As in, I wish this film didn't exist. Yeah, here's the problem with it. It's boring, bland, the characters are uninteresting. It, basically, all the problems that you could you could imagine. It's just like, there's nothing you can do to like fix it or anything like that because... It's it's already too late. This this concept and this idea was dead on arrival. Who better to tear it apart than Doug Walker himself? So I guess we're gonna see what Doug thinks about Wish. He's gonna regale us on why he thinks this is a bad film. At least I hope that's what's gonna happen. If all of a sudden he secretly goes, this film's actually secretly one of Disney's best films, then I'm just gonna be like, okay, I don't think we need to watch Nostalgia Critic anymore. <laughs> I think Doug has officially lost his mind. But anyway, we got this queued up here. Let's give it a watch. Here we go. This episode brought to you by Legacy Box, the best way to digitize your home movies and photos. Hey folks, we're starting YouTube memberships. If you want access to emojis, polls, behind the scene videos, and other perks, check out and see if you want to become a member. And come check us out at C2E2. Hope to see you there. Oh, he skipped the intro. So we don't have any lines this week? No, he just said he's throwing a big celebration for the Wish Review. What kind of celebration? The kind of celebration 100 years of Disney deserves. Now, close your eyes. I want it to be a surprise. Oh, Are they closed? Yes. yes. Enter. Ah. I forget about the eye thing. Just come in here. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yes. Welcome to 100 years of Disney. Where? Yeah, it doesn't look like you put any effort into this. How dare you? Of course I did. There's Disney magic all around you. There is? Of course. For example, that <laughs> book. What about it? It's the book from Cinderella. This is a collection of tales from the crypt. Clearly there's going to be some artistic license. Got some purists. Also, did you mean to leave your coffee pot out? I'm hand Mrs. Potts. Critic, I played Mrs. Potts in 12th grade. I know Mrs. Potts. I'm practically friends with Mrs. Potts. This, sir, is no Mrs. Potts. <laughs> I expect that from someone who wants nothing different. No change at all. Change works when you add something good, not take away something good. Well, any more talk like that, I won't let you pet our biggest guest of all. Chaplin? Oh. No, it's a cat from Disney. Which one? All of them! It's all the cats from Disney! <laughs> Figaro, Lucifer, whatever the hell the rest of cats were named, it's all of them! I'm lazily conceived. Oh, man. <laughs> None of this represents what people like about Disney. Not even with all these classic characters finally together? Just saying something is something doesn't make it something! Oh, ain't that something? No, it's nothing! But you're gonna miss the grand finale! I've had it with this Wonka experience. Oh, come on. Maybe it'll be intriguingly disappointing. It's the horse from Wish! Was there a horse in Wish? You gonna watch the movie to find out? Hell no. Come on, give him a good kick! <laughs> <laughs> Literally beating a dead horse. <laughs> Don't worry about him, he's dead! Take that, Wish! Take that! Take that, Wish! Take that! Okay, Critic, I think we're done here. It's the 100-year anniversary of Disney! I know, honey. It's so good! <laughs> it's so good! Let's get you some happy gummies. Look at that light! It's linear! Disney, baby! Yeah! Poor, poor critic. Yep, everyone's made fun of what was supposed to be Disney's 100-year cinematic celebration, Wish. Like almost everything that came out from Disney that year, it cost a lot of money and had a lot of talented people involved, but turned out ultimately soulless. Now, to some extent, you can say, so what? There's a lot of soulless stuff from Disney. But now, now you understand, this reached a new fascinating level. This film was so soulless, even Pazuzu wouldn't be able to possess it. Where some Disney Damn. films take risks that creatively backfire, this one played it so safe that people swear the entire movie was AI generated. It's the definition of a charts movie. It tried so hard to have everything that it ended up having nothing. So how can something so ambitious turn out something so passionless? Well, let's take a closer look. Because it feels so good! It feels so good! <laughs> Stop. Oh, this is Wish! Oh, <laughs> 
understand that. Oh. Yeah, what do you say we get a more accurate logo for Disney's 100-year celebration? Like, no, 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 no! <laughs> Look, the Snow White font. This is going to be just like Snow White. No, really, I'm serious. Once upon a time. The only way you're going to fix that is if you CG out Rachel's, Rachel Zegler and actually replace her with someone who gives a shit. There was a young man. We get the backstory of a sorcerer named Magnifico. Wow, you're giving the name Jensen dignity. Who achieved the power to take people's deepest wishes away and hold on to them. He also understood just how impossible it can be to make that wish come true. Man, that became the slogan for the movie after it came out. Hmm. He sets up an island where people could have their wishes taken away, but also protected. So rather than follow their dreams, they all just live peacefully together. Boy, they really do try to throw in a lot of Easter eggs from other Disney films. There's the dick from Little Mermaid! Aww. The king has called a wish ceremony today! Every month someone has granted their wish, and our main character, Asha, played by Ariana DeBose, hopes her grandfather will get his wish on his 100th birthday. Grandfather. Valentina's never done talking. If only we could understand you. Uh, can I wish for that not to happen? <laughs> so at first the style doesn't look that bad. I'm a big fan of watercolor, so my hope was maybe they could utilize them the same way the Spider-Verse movies utilize the comic book style. But unlike something like Lilo and Stitch, where the 2D painted cells really stand out against the 2D watercolor, mm -hmm. 3D relies on depth perception. I mean, that's practically what 3D means, right? More depth. You need to play with focus and color in a different way than you do with 2D. And everything here stays in focus, but is shot like it shouldn't all be in focus. Like, is this a flat tapestry of the town, or is it just the town? Is that apple really big, or is it just really close to you? You can't <clears> tell. <throat> Sometimes this can work, like in Sleeping Beauty or The Thief and the Cobbler. But again, the styles of those movies match 2D perfectly. This is just 3D minus the depth, and a few very flat lines thrown on them. Yeah, rather than have the lines accentuate the animation, like in Spider-Verse, this looks like a phone app turned up the sharp filter on Tangled. So yeah, it does. This, this once again, this just feels so safe and so beaten down by, like, corporate overhead. Just like, just like, no, we can't have any, can't have any harsh lines or anything like that. It's so stupid. But because nothing stops the characters in the foreground blending into the background, it sadly gives us the blandness of both 2D and 3D. But don't worry, we have songs that are there. Welcome to the shitty Madrigal. <laughs> right, yeah. So if I have to be totally fair, the melodies to the songs are alright. They're a touch generic, but I do find myself humming a few of them afterwards, and I think that counts for something. The lyrics, on the other hand. This might sink in in the morning. We are our own origin story. Leave you here, I don't wanna. I wanna. I'm past dipping my toes in, but I'm not. No, I'm not past diving in. You're trying to Lin Manuel Miranda, and you don't know how to Lin Manuel Miranda. See this kingdom, I built it up, and you still complain ungrateful much. These feel so rushed Ooh. and so forced yeah. that they sound more like whose line songs than professional writers. Oh my God. Wishes aren't safe because of me, and that's a lie, 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 lie. Just use that one word over and over. That'll Ooh, show again. how much time you put into this. It, well, yeah, this, there's no substance to this film in the slightest. The little fun allegory that gets me excited, Tori. Well, we're running out of rhymes. La 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 Peter Tork. Watch our world, here I are. Who talks like that? What is this? I are baboon and I am weasel? Look out, world, here I are. It's like. Ugh. Isn't that the idea? Like, rhymes are supposed to flow as naturally as one talks? This would be like... So, uh, just for reference for everybody, when I say I don't like musicals, uh, this is what I perceive most musicals like. So just imagine that's how I see a musical whenever I hear a musical. It means the day like, with the exception of a few that have some really good songs, like uh, Sweeney Todd and Repo. Four. I granted 14 wishes last year. Come on, that's a high percent. They're pretty bad. Asha hopes to be Magnifico's apprentice as they usually get their wishes granted along with their family. She gets support from the seven twats here, who I guess are supposed to be her friends, but honestly, seven come across twats. as kind of a-holes. Like how they mentioned how one of them never got their wish granted. You don't want to have to end up like Simon here. What's wrong with Simon here? I don't know. You're 
kind of boring now. Wow, what dwarf is he based off of, douchey? <laughs> if you haven't put together yet, yes, these are supposed to be the seven dwarfs. To what purpose does this serve? We'll get to that in a bit, and don't worry, it's quite disappointing. Tell me why you think you should be my apprentice. Asha goes to see Magnifico, played by Chris Pine, and at first they seem to get along as he shows her where he keeps all the wishes. It's just something my father taught me. I think I remember your father. Your father's Chinese, right? And a woman? My entire family destroyed by greedy thieves. I mm. founded this kingdom so there would be a place where everyone is safe. Hmm, interesting. Andrew Ryan, anybody? Can't wait to learn more about that. Oh, this is him later? Mirrors love my face. You're cute and strong and bold and brave. Thanks. Um, all right. I guess for now he seems okay. Looking over her grandfather's wish to inspire people through music. Create something to inspire the next generation. Too vague. Create what? A rebellious mob? Once he makes a wish that's as harmless and bland as, well, wish we could get somewhere. Asha asks questions that really you don't have to be a mathematician to figure out. I make it so they forget their worries. So most of these wishes will never be granted? Well, yeah, girl. It's like paying for a raffle ticket and being like only one person wins and we don't get our money back? That's not fine print, that's just print. You must have got manure for your brains. <laughs> when she finds out what he promised to people was exactly what he promised to people, she disagrees with his ways and he goes full Anakin turning on a dime. And they don't know what they're missing. They deserve more than I decide what everyone deserves. And yes, I do love the irony that this film has some original Epcot vibes. Needless to say, she doesn't get the apprenticeship or her grandmother's mm. wish as it goes to someone else. To sew the most beautiful dresses in all the land. But what kind of dresses? Rebellious mob dresses? On second thought, this is too vague. I'm taking it back. There's always next time. Cheers to that. <laughs> Asha has to go back to tell her grandfather the bad news. He said it's too dangerous to grant. My wish is dangerous. I just wanted to round up people of different races and religions and kick them out of the country. You know, maybe he was right. Let's not uncap that. Asha! And man, should I apologize to Prince of Egypt saying their song transitions were hit and miss? After Asha has an argument with her grandfather, it goes right into the emotional song number. <laughs> Is in truth so now you can't just blurt it out like that. No, seriously, yeah. you just don't want me to feel anything. <laughs> Five TV dinners I form more of an attachment to. Asha sings a song wishing upon a star, and sure enough, a star answers and comes on down to greet her. Luma? Anybody? <laughs> Anybody else see it? Luma from from Super Mario Galaxy? Oh ho there. <laughs> this is another Luma. pretty generic Disney sidekick. It doesn't really have much personality aside from happy. I think I would have dug it more if it was the star from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, well, yep. yeah. The only hope is the sweet relief of death. Dude! <laughs> but don't worry, the side characters get worse. No, she said not better, but worse. Alan Tudyk plays the goat with the voice you want to laugh at. If only he would say something funny. Careful! Uh, my mother was shaved for that yarn. Uh, I meant to do that. No, really, the voice itself is humorous. I want to laugh at it. I'm actually prepared to laugh at it. All the setups are there, but it almost impressively never delivers a good joke. Just whiff. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was right in your ear. Return to your stables. If anyone asks, play dumb. Listening to this thing is like watching Clayface suddenly discover the idea of humor. It's as obvious as my baby beard. It is I, the Superman from Krypton. And goddammit, didn't we just have a song? I've known the entire time. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. This world has shareholders? God, these lyrics are bad. I give credit, this is one of the few moments where it's not a shame to look 3D. The colors pop, the camera has good movement, the shadows create some real depth. Yeah, visual depth, the characters mm. are still shit. Yeah, they're still as shallow as a puddle. King Magnifico has their wishes in the castle. But if we take them, isn't that stealing? Right. They don't belong to him, do they? Yes, they do. They all agree to it. I mean, I wouldn't be dumb enough to do it, but if somebody wanted to do something stupid like this... <laughs> that's their choice! Yeah, that is. That is completely the fault of the person signing up. Asha tries to break in and get her grandfather's wish, and... I don't know, this happens, I guess. Okay, ladies! This was the big topper, 
in all the trailers. Your wings can't fly, but your voice is I never thought I'd be craving the sloth scene from Zootopia. <laughs> we won't tell anyone, Asha. The seven boars agree to help Asha as Magnifico tries to alert everyone of the magic that came from the star. It was magic, though quite clumsy and amateurish. That is literally the plot summary on the back of the Blu-ray. <laughs> Mock Doc tries to stall him while Asha gets the wishes, resulting in people asking questions, again, anyone with a brain would ask from the start. How do we know our wishes are safe? We never see them! Why can't we see them? Why can't we remember them? What if we want to change our wish? Why are we only now asking this? Why are we pretending nobody would ask this before? I'm Spartacus! Whoever identifies the traitor, your wish will be granted. Unless it's Joe. Joe, I know what your wish is, and you should be ashamed. That's <laughs> bad, bad. It's pretty bad, Joe. Rule 34, what do you want to bet? <laughs> oh, I'm a monster, and I'm sorry. You should be, Joe. Wow. Hey, you might remember a few years ago when Mara Wilson kind of hey, embarrassed me with my old home movies. It was very scarring. I'm still going to therapy for it. That was terrible. It was terrible what she did to me. Those eyes, they haunt me to this day. But how did she digitize all that? Well, that's where a company like Legacy Box comes in. You're gonna love Legacy Box, and with Mother's Day fast approaching, it's a great gift for the whole family. Relive moments like wedding days, first steps, or the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s. Please, get that off screen. Reconnect with your family's <laughs> history. Legacy Box digitizes over 15 different types of analog media. So whether it's Super 8 millimeter film reels or photo negatives, they've got you covered. And like I said, they even do VHS tapes. Please stop, stop it, no. Whether it's embarrassing home movies or things you're actually proud of and can't be used as blackmail, there's all sorts of possibilities. Join over the 1.5 million families that have trusted Legacy Legacy Box with their memories. Go to LegacyBox.com slash critic to save 60% on their best Mother's Day sale ever. That's LegacyBox.com slash critic. Yeah, pubescent Doug acting like a fool. There's probably video evidence out there of me acting a fool on camera. Like me doing, like, trying to do flips from one trampoline to the other and slipping and falling and falling off the trampoline like a dum-dum. Yeah, I did that. It hurt. As far as I know, there's not any of me. Oh. I was like, never given the opportunity to be on video camera when I was younger. Hey folks, I'll be playing Final Fantasy VII every Friday on Twitch. I've never played a Final Fantasy game before, so I'm excited to see what they're like. Hope to see you there. Like I mentioned before, Magnifico goes from Okay, not super deep, but having potential for something really complex. To suddenly a vain egotistical show-off. You're so brilliant. There's more. Admit it. In what world did anybody think these two songs would come from the same character? How do we go from a Ramesses-style layered villain to InSync growing up into Siegfried and Roy after eating Guy Fury? This be like if Frollo had Hellfire switched out with Gaston's song. No one lusts like Frollo or mistrusts like Frollo. Who's roaming for me, gypsy boss like Frollo? <laughs> oh, but his amazing transition isn't done yet. He has an evil book of spells that once open makes you even more power hungry and vengeful. To this book, I don't want to be tethered, but desperate times call for desperate measures. I mean, why are you acting like this guy didn't out of nowhere become a psycho asshole already? This would be like the Joker falling to that vat of chemicals and saying, oh, he also hit his head on the way out. That part made him crazy. Yeah, it's not really needed at this point. This no. belongs to me. Asha gives the wish to her grandfather, but looks like an inside tip led Magnifico straight to them. Uh -oh. While there, he crushes her mother's wish, and yeah, we're gonna find the only person who can take me down. Better bring two guards. Thus Asha and her family manage to escape. I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. We're never gonna make our money back. Nope. <laughs> Asha swim. And you didn't. Comes back to shore. Shark! What? No, no, I, I, I have not seen the shark. I'm just practicing. Say something funny! The fact that that's Alan Tudyk, and he's being forced to say these cringy lines... Yeah. ...is not good. Pretty sad. Because, yeah, like, Wash is funny as hell. Alan Tudyk is a talented, talented, talented comedic person. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Dude, even his like it, IRL like timing, comedic timing is perfect. Because you remember the time where it was him, or, okay, it was uh, I think Halo 3 or 4, I can't, I think, no, it was Halo 
4 had come out, and him and Nathan Fillion got early access, and they were sitting uh, where the uh, like testers usually played, and then Justin Bieber walked in, and Justin Bieber then told his bodyguards to go around and tell everybody to leave, and Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyk are sitting there playing Halo, and then all of a sudden, bodyguard comes up and be like, hey man, hey, Justin Bieber doesn't want anyone else in the room while he's playing, so uh, y'all need to leave. To which Alan Tudyk, who was sitting there, looks up. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, that's not happening." Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. Justin Bieber, dude. Like, yeah, he's gonna right act like man. an asshole. Fuck him. But once again, Alan Tudyk, Nathan Fillion. I mean, just those two together. It's just something magical. Whereas Alan Tudyk here is just sad and just not not who he's supposed to be. And you might be wondering, what's even the goal of the movie now? I mean, the grandfather has his wish. That was Asha's whole motivation. So now what? Well, you have to go back and save the rest of the people, of course. Because they look like they're in so much turmoil. <sighs> look, maybe if the people were half alive or zombie-like without their wishes, this could work. I or, or better yet, better yet, they couldn't remember their wish, and not only that, but it drained the, it like drained their soul from them, and they seemed like they were just like lost. They were just like going through life, just existing. Yeah, you Not have to portray them as like having no motivation to do anything and just being basically depressed shells. If you want to have this be like an actual conflict, yeah. And the very moment like they're they start to remember their dream, the very moment that they have like little remnants of that dream come back into their mind you see their faces light back up you see the world around like they start viewing the world around them as brighter and you know just like they get that hope back in their heart and then once they get to the point where their dream is like right there and like they're thinking about it i don't remember it i don't remember it i wish i could remember and they just go right back into that pit but instead what's the portrayal here that makes any sense there isn't it, this is literally just Oh, God, this is so bad. I honestly thought maybe they were hinting towards that with this character. But he's just sleepy because clever, <laughs> and everyone else is energetic as hell. Magnifico does start destroying wishes, filling people with grief, but even that's technically a reaction of Asha disrupting the laws of this world. Yeah, he's not right to do it, but maybe they were lied to or something from the start. Maybe I'd get behind this, but everybody is told everything about how this world works and nobody is suffering from it. So there's zero urgency. I should also bring up apparently in another draft, the queen was supposed to be evil too which would have made them Disney's first villain couple in an animated film. I'm not gonna lie, it would have been pretty cool if she saw him doing all this and said, why didn't you bring me in earlier? That would have been so cool! <laughs> or, or, better yet, she like peeks in and she's like, and, it, and then the king turns around and he's like, darling, I didn't know you were there. And she's like, okay, whose dream did you kill this time? Come on, y you gotta tell me these things. But instead, she stays royally bland as Magnifico reveals who handed Asha over. See your wish to be the king's most valiant and loyal knight. Also, something about sodomizing a cocker spaniel. Yeah, where are the bad wishes? Everyone just wants to fly or make dresses. Where's the scene of Asha looking at one of those bubbles saying, Oh, oh, I, I didn't know we needed to make that illegal, but we got to make that illegal. <laughs> yeah, just like... It reminds me of an old vine back in the day. It's just like, don't just remember, kids, follow your dreams. Like, I want to be a serial killer. <laughs> Maybe you should forget about your dream, little kid. Magnifico grants his wish as well as hypnotizes him. So Asha meets up with what's left of the seven twins. Please say you didn't destroy those people's wishes. Well, indirectly I did, but you don't understand. People are going to live the rest of their lives peaceful and happy. We got to stop him. Can you tell what we're becoming? Hear it in the way we're drumming. That's pretty much the mindset as they play their defiant We Ain't Gonna Take It Anymore song, and I just realized I don't even know this community that well. I mean, I know these seven, but they're taken from another story and done badly. I don't really yes. get much of an identity from this kingdom. Like, even the town from Beauty and the Beast wasn't anything that complex, but I do remember them. There is a song about them, and we get their personalities quickly, and they do stick with us throughout the rest of the film. These people all look like the CG extras from Hunchback of Notre Dame. 
<laughs> oh my god. Look, here's the thing. I hate to say it, but every single one of these characters on screen right now gives me randomly generated NPC vibes. There's no personality to them. Like look at the like look at the emptiness of this person's face of this one's face. This one t look at the she's cross-eyed! Look at her. she's staring this way. <laughs> Look, look at this dude. The this... dude in the very front right there with the blue hat is like the only one that kind of has some personality. Yes. Because the hat, the hair, the beard. And, and, but this guy here, Bland, this guy here, he's about to fall asleep. The, like, dude, look at this. This is just, this is so sad. It's like, oh, look, you got your diversity checkbox, but are, are any of these characters three-dimensional? No. No. They're flat. They're bland. They bring nothing to the table. But hey, we made it look like everyone's included. Like you're supposed to not notice them. Yet this is the heart of the movie they're fighting for now. I don't feel shit for any of this. I've seen too many bad things. That the queen joins their little coup too. And who can blame her with bad puns like this? Fantasyland in the sky. Fantasyland. The perfect nanny for your horrible children. Popping this one! If you're like me, you were saying these references goddamn better be building to something that's worth it. <laughs> They're not, but again, we'll get to that in a bit. Mm. The star makes a magic wand for Asha. Yeah, get it? It's Batman. I don't care anymore. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, what's the point of even trying to care anymore? They're so lazy with this shit. It's just like, why? Why, why do I even care? What the fuck is going on? And if a goat chases her down. Oh, oh dear. Pain. Rather than remind us you're the same company that made Snow White, why don't you act like you're the same company that made Snow White? You really think you can take me down? Thanks, John. In a time, Asha. Little John, get it? I don't. Uh -huh. It's just reminding you the movie exists. It's not saying anything about it. Got any other phone-ins? Mirrors, mirrors on the wall. Shut the fuck! Magnifico gets Yeah. The star and uses it for his wand, but I guess everyone fighting back defeats his magic. Or something like that. I don't know. That's usually it. Drat. I've been foiled by poorly motivated love! He gets sucked into the scepter because I did pay attention if they explain why, and he's in prison there forever. In the dungeon. Please, no! The dungeon smells really bad! Ooh, a smell bad joke. Robin Williams worked with this studio, folks. I dream of a utopian metropolis where all mammals are equal. And wear clothes. Oh. <laughs> Zootopia. Oh, I can think of the whimsical world he's referencing. Oh! <laughs> Long live animal far. Ooh, yeah. Mm. So everybody is given their wishes back, and Ash is even given the role of, say it with me, Fairy Godmother, to decide whose wishes should be granted. <sighs> Isn't this almost exactly the same thing? Yes. How can we ever thank you? Just keep wishing. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that supposed to... Oh, oh, I know. Is that supposed to be a reference to Finding Nemo? Because just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Instead, just keep wishing, just keep wishing. Turned out there's a few Mussolinis in there. Sorry. And you won. Damn, that's a big cock. Wonder why I'm grumpy. I don't think you call Twi hens cocks. Dude. I'm joking. It is a hen, yeah. Be delicious Christ crucified on popsicle stick. Shut up. So you might be wondering what were all those lame references building up to? Back callback after back callback. What was it all for? Is Asha going to create individual worlds where they can live out their wishes giving birth to these classics? Are stories of these wishes granted going to trickle on down to writers over the years who are going to give their spin on these tales? Is this all a fever dream Walt had before he died? What's it all amounting to? Nothing. <laughs> are you ready for this? Absolutely nothing. Yep, not a damn thing. They do the Mickey Mouse logo as if to clarify, oh yeah, we have no plan, we're just saying things you recognize, and then we're on the end credits. And as the final insult to injury, they have the balls to show all these classic characters throughout the ending scroll. Yep, you get to use them in your credits because you clearly have no idea how to use them in your movie. I guarantee you they did this because of the, well, it's the 100th anniversary and 
you know, even though we're doing references to them in the movie that aren't going to pay off to anything, we should still put them in the end credits because, you know, 100th anniversary. No, you don't get to use these characters. You're given access to some of the most iconic creations in film history, and you haven't amount to this anus juice spewing hole? A hole would be something. No, it was nothing. Exactly. <laughs> this isn't the worst Disney movie ever made. It's something worse. It's nothing. It feels like death by a thousand notes. A lot of talented people worked on this, and I don't think it's a problem of not trying. I think it's a problem of people just didn't know what to do. It was rumored for a while that at the 100 year anniversary, a movie would be made featuring at least one character from every Disney animated film. Maybe that's how it started out, and people kept throwing more and more ideas around and became something that just couldn't live up to the pressure of representing everything this behemoth of a company represents. I, I mean, maybe, but at the same time, it's like, do like a hand-drawing thing where it's just like, it's like, okay, we have here in this bundle of straws is, I want you 10 to pick at random, and whatever 10 films are pulled from, no matter what, we will have that, we will have that as our main characters in the film. Like, do something like that. That's what that would have made more sense than this shit. I think a cooler route would have been if they made Magnifico the main character. Have him start off as the hero, and then he starts to spiral out of control or gets corrupted, and then maybe a character like Ash or his wife has to call him back to his sanity. That would be an interesting take. We haven't seen that from Disney animation. A hero that becomes the villain, but then becomes the hero again. It would have been something new and challenging. But look, I don't know what went on behind the scenes. I can't pretend I saw what all went down. All I can say is that the final product is beyond lackluster. I doubt Disney's days are numbered. They're most likely gonna bounce back, but I think many will remember one of their toughest points when they turned out a safe and passionless nothing. And that's all I have to say about that. You did good, critic. And you sure you don't want to kick it one more time? No, no, it's, it's time to move on. Thank you, Wish. Thank you for giving me so much material. Wait, the, the inside of his coat says something else. Wait, wait, the dead horse isn't Wish, it's Madam Web. Oh, hell yeah. Let's kick the shit. Oh, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Please tell me that's next week. Doug, are you going to cover Madam Web next week? Because if you do, yes. Yes, I want to hear, hear everything you have to say about that. Oh God, Madam Web. Watch out, world! Here I are. I are done with this fucking movie. Jesus. Oh, so yeah. I think all that's left is the charity shout out. Yep, charity shout out. Yeah, Na uh, Napier Humane Org. Uh, well, that was something. What do you say? about a film like this. What do you say about a film that offers nothing? A film that is a void, that just sucks in everything and gives us nothing back in return except disappointment. Don't know. I am glad I didn't watch this in theaters. Really, really sucks that that's supposed to be like their celebration of a hundred years, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's like clearly a lot can go wrong in that span of time. Uh-huh. I just... I just don't get it, man. Like, this is... Like, Disney had so long to think of this. To think of something to do with this. And this, this movie, is the end result. It shows me that right now, Disney, the company overall is collectively artistically and entirely bankrupt of ideas of new ips of anything if this is the shit that they're willing to crank out for their 100th anniversary one of the most famous animation studios ever to exist some consider the gold standard of animation here in the west i uh, oh wow i don't know what to say to this i don't i'm i'm literally just 
I'm I'm at a loss for words. So what did you like? So what did you think about this? I mean, very little. Exactly. It's like there's not much there to really think about. Exactly. Well. It's like this is just sad. Yeah, I need something else to get my mind off this. So. I like that Doug's though is uh, right next to Doug Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's cool. Pinhead from Elric. Or. It, You're right. You're yeah, right. pinhead from I brain once again. I'm I'm cooked. But this, you yeah. You opened the box and I came. I was gonna say, do you need a do you need a, like a towel to clean up? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh! What a good waste of suffering! Gosh, the daggone Cenobites. Anyway, that's gonna do it, everyone. So, till next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Be sure to check out more from Doug Walker by clicking the Channel Awesome logo in the title of the video. Be and sure you never give Disney any watch time on this. No. Once instead, instead, just watch Doug's review of it. You'll get the basis of it, you'll get the gist of it, and you'll save yourself some sanity. And you'll actually laugh. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.